Hi everyone, thanks for joining me. Today I'm working in one of the few remaining pages in my Strathmore Mixed Media Journal and I'm going to cover a double page spread with the white gesso from Indigo Blue which is called G So Good. I'm going to give the pages a liberal coating and then I'm going to give it a real good heat blast with the heat tool to make sure it's all nice and dry. Next I'm going to tear some strips of the Tim Holtz Ideology tissue paper called Melange into some thin strips and then I'm going to stick it down using a matte medium from Indigo Blue called Slap It On. And there it is. And it's a really good matte medium for sticking almost anything down. Now what I'm going to do is I will stick down a couple of pieces and then I will go into super speed and whiz through sticking all the rest of the bits down so you don't have to sit there for hours watching me do it. You may be wondering at this point why I didn't just stick down the entire sheet over the double page spread. Well, the reason being is that I didn't want to use the pattern as a whole. I wanted to fragment it, which is why you see me tear up the image of the moth and then place the various different parts of the wings and the body in opposite places. I wanted to break it up and make it really quite fragmented. So now that the page is completely dry and it's been heat set, I'm bringing out the Indigo Blue Hot Cocoa Brown Acrylic Paint. This is from their um, English Cottage Artists Acrylic Paint range and it's very, very pigment rich and you can water it down quite well without losing any of the colour tone. Because I've put the matte medium all across the page, um, the paint won't dry immediately, it doesn't soak straight into the page, so you do have quite a little bit of time to be able to manoeuvre the paint around and move it around how you want it before it actually dries. So it's really useful in that way. So you'll see me apply the paint, you'll see me remove some of the paint and I'll also get out a baby wipe and start manoeuvring the paint around the page, making it a bit lighter in areas, a bit mottled in areas, um, and just until I'm happy with the overall coverage and the opacity of the paint on the page. So the tidy craft for me kicks in now and this is where I just have a little bit of a tidy up and clear out of the way just to make sure I'm not dragging my elbows in any of the paint left on the, uh, the worktop. So I'm just having a quick tidy up and then before the paint finally does actually set I'm going to bring out a stencil and another baby wipe. So this is the burlap stencil from the Tim Holtz collection and I'm just removing some of the paint through the stencil with the baby wipe so a kind of a ghosting effect i'm laying the stencil down and then removing the paint through the openings to reveal the white of that um, page and the prints underneath it and i'll do that around the page in various different places And there you go, I'm just showing you the stencil so you can see the code number. So when I'm happy with it, I'm going to give it a quick blast with a heat tool to make sure it's all nice and dry before moving on to my next stage. So for my next step I'm going to bring out another stencil, this is a new one for me, just recently purchased. It's from TCW and it's called the Mini Specimen by Rebecca Mayer. There you go, Mini Specimens. So 
So with this stencil, I'm going to bring out another one of the Indigo Blue uh, English Cottage Artist Acrylic Paints, this time Burning Bonfire. And I'm also going to use a very inexpensive sponge dauber to apply the paint from my craft mat uh, through the stencil. I'm just going to apply the paint through the stencil around the page using various different areas of the stencil in the various different areas around the page. Not really got any plan in mind, I'm just deciding where I think it's going to look good. No other thought behind it other than that. This is one of those art journal pages where I actually had a plan in mind um, of how I wanted it to look. I had an image in my head of how I wanted the finished page to look but it was the journey from you know imagination to actual physical page that really is the journey you, you don't really know whether it's going to work or whether your imagination will translate literally onto a physical page so as with most art journal pages it, it is just trial and error and a, a true case of suck it and see So once again, when I'm happy with the placement of the stenciled items, I'm going to get the heat tool out and just set that in place to make sure that it's not going to move. They are acrylic paints, which means that they are permanent when dry. And then we're ready to move on to our next step. So as I usually do between each step, I sit and look at the page to make sure it's how I want it to be. Now, you can't really tell from the video footage because my lights are quite bright but those colours are quite dark and quite vibrant and I thought they were a little bit too bright so I wanted just to knock them back a little bit. So this is what I'm going to do now. I'm just going to apply a very thin coat of watered down gesso. Again it's the same gesso I used originally and I'm just going to apply a thin gesso wash across the top of the pages. Now when I do put it on it does look a lot whiter on the video than it actually does in real life. You'll just have to trust me on this one. Actually, you will be able to tell from the photographs at the end because it does look a lot more, uh, the photos are, are a lot more of a, an accurate representation color-wise than the video is. So again, once I've put the gesso on, I will give it a heat blast with the heat tool just to set it so that I can move on to my next step. And here you'll see me do something I don't do very often. Not wishing to waste the white gesso, I'm going to just apply that to one of the next, or one of the, the few remaining pages in my art journal. You can see I'm almost at the end and I'm ready to do a flip through. I have been asked whether I will do a flip through on this journal, which I will do. I've just got one more page to use up and then I will record a complete flip through from start to finish. So now that we're all dry, I'm going to bring out a double stamp set from Stampin' Up! called Gently Falling. This is a two-step stamp set and set one is the backgrounds and set two is the outlines. So I'm going to use the darker backgrounds first of all and I'm going to use Ranger Archival Ink and I believe the colour is Potting Soil on this one and I'm going to place the stamp onto my Crafts 2 stamp press. There's the ink. And then I'm just going to stamp around the page. First of all, well, I'm going to do one with the stamp press and then I'm going to get rid of the stamp press because I'm not really bothered about having a totally even impression on the stamp. And the stamp press is a bit unwieldy, so I'm afraid that goes by the by. So there you go. You can see me just using the stamp on its own now to stamp around the page in various different locations, um, just randomly, no real plan. And I'm going to use the um, that stamp there's another one that I think is an, an oak uh, and there's also a sycamore um, I don't know what you call those in the US but we call those little helicopters the seed pods from a sycamore tree um, because they when they fall from the trees they're like a little mini helicopter
and that's the little sycamore seed stamp there. You'll see what I mean when I uh, stamp it on the page. I've recently had a clear out of all my stamping up stamps and sold most of them, but this is one of the stamp sets which I would never ever let go because it's just such a versatile set. It may even be discontinued now, not really sure. Okay, so now I'm finished with the stamping, I'm just going to give my stamps a quick clean off with a baby wipe and pop them back into the box. And then I'm going to bring out the heat tool and just dry off the ink on the page before I move on to my next stage. So we'll have a quick close up on the pages before I pop it to one side, ready for the exciting next stage of the process. So out comes my flitter glue, a piece of fat foam and my spatula. So again this flitter glue is from Indigo Blue and comes in two sizes. This is the larger of the two sizes. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to squeeze out about the size of a teaspoon onto the fat foam. There you go, you can see it better that way. I said my lights were quite bright. And I'm just going to gently push the flitter glue into the fat foam. So I'm literally just pushing it into the foam, letting the glue soak all the way through. So I'm creating a, a kind of um, glue pad with the, um, the foam and the glue and I'm just adding a little bit more there so I know I've got a decent saturation ready for what I'm going to do next and then when I'm happy with the glue has disappeared completely you'll see me place it upside down on my craft mat so that it slows down the drying out process. So out comes stamping it set number two this is the detail lines and for this I am going to use an acrylic block because I do want to make sure I get an even impression uh, and a clear impression using the glue. So I'm just going to dab that pad over the stamp now and then I'm going to stamp using the glue over the stamp that I've already done. So I'm now going to repeat that process for all of the stamps including the sycamore seeds and the oak leaves but I'm not going to sit, make you sit and watch me do all of that so what I will do is I will jump to the end where I've just doing the last one or two. Now for my favourite bit I'm bringing out the Mega Flake this time I'm using a colour called Yorkshire Dales and I'm going to liberally apply the gilding flake all over the glued areas on those stamps. Now I'm manoeuvring the gilding flake around the page with my fingers and I'm making sure I've got plenty on I'm dropping it over the glue, making sure that all of the gilding flake has been picked up by that glue and that I'm burnishing it in with my fingers as I'm going. So I'm going to carry on putting the flake over all of the stamped images. So once I've got a nice even coverage over all of the stamped images, I'm just going to rub my fingers over each one just to make sure that there's no gaps missing and I'm just burnishing that down a little bit and then tapping off the excess. Now I'm going to put all that excess back into my pot, I'm not going to waste any of it and I have a little bit of a tidy up. So you can already see the light start to reflect from that gilding flake and I'm bringing out my scoochie which is a very soft abrasive sponge and people have asked me how that is spelt so I'll put the spelling of it just on the screen there. There you go and I'm just going to go around all the gilded areas now look at the light shining off that now isn't that beautiful. Now that's going to remove any excess flake 
and just leave the flake stuck down to the stamped image over the top of our darker ones. So just go around the page on a light rubbing motion just to remove all that excess gilding flake. And I'm just going to tilt the pages now so you can see how the light reflects from that beautiful um, gilding flake, all those beautiful colours you've got reds in there you've got blues and greens and just such a stunning addition to the page just look at the way it reflects beautiful so i'm just going to have a quick clean up and remove all the excess bits and pieces and drop those into the bin and then the final step is to add my quote which i'm typing out onto my dymo letter tag which is an absolute godsend for our journalists it means we don't have to fiddle around with lots of alphabet stamps to print out a, a quote for our pages It also means you can check for spelling mistakes before you stick them down, which is another great godsend. So now we have our quote printed, I'm just going to snip those two pieces into half and then I can begin to stick them down. Now the letter tag labels when they come out are already self adhesive and it is quite a strong adhesive so you don't need any additional glue but you can add medium to it or gel medium, matte medium if you want to but you don't really need to. So I'll just speed through the process of me sticking down the quote across the pages and for those that are interested the quote actually is by an Irish poet called William Allingham. So to finish off I'm just going to bring out one of my silks in ginger peach and I'm just going to take a small detail brush and I'm going to add some of that gorgeous sort of shimmering orangey autumny colour across all the, um, the, the bands of my quote blocks. So an interesting thing happened when I put the heat tool over the um, the quote block because they're thermally produced. The actual tape that you print onto, um, the letters are actually thermally burnt on. So when I heated them, they actually started to turn a little bit brown, which was a really really happy accident because they've kind of auto distressed themselves. Now how cool is that? So just to add a finishing touches, I'm just using a black, um, it's just a gel pen because I've not used any matte medium um, over the top of the paints or anything like that and it is literally just paint writing onto gesso, then it doesn't have to be a specific type of pen to you to do this. Um, this is just a water based gel pen so there's no need to get my food ball out at all. So I'm using that instead. So that's just about it for this page. All I need to do now is just to write down William's name underneath the quote so that I'll know in future where it came from. And that's this page complete. I hope you've enjoyed watching the process using the Indigo Blue Mega Flake and you enjoy the colours and the way that that light plays off that gold flake. It's just absolutely stunning. So if you've enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed to my YouTube channel already, you can do so by clicking the button at the end of the video. Once again, thanks for watching and see you again real soon.